Lesson 6.2, Model Subtraction with Unlike Denominators. We can use models to subtract fractions that have different denominators. We can use fraction strips to model the minuend and place fraction strips below it to represent the subtrahen. So the first number is our minuen. We're taking away the subtrahen. So we put the minuend fraction strip on top, the subtrahen one on the bottom, and we'll be able to see the difference between them. To find the difference by using models, we try fitting fraction strips under the difference that have an exact fit. If we need to use more than one fraction strip in the empty space, they must have the same denominator as each other. So we can see the one-fourth is too big. It doesn't fit. We can also see the one-fifth piece is too big. It doesn't fit exactly. And we see the one-sixth piece does fit. It fits perfectly. And we can see two one-twelfth pieces also fit. But we want it to be in simplest form, so we choose the least amount of fraction strips, and that would be the one-sixth piece. By finding the fewest amount of fraction strips that will have an exact fit for the difference, we're putting the difference into simplest form. One one-sixth piece would be simplest form. Here we have two one-twelfth pieces. That's two pieces. So one-half minus one-third is equal to one-sixth in simplest form. If we fit larger pieces first, we'll find the simplest form. The difference must be written in simplest form. We learned it in 4th grade math 6.3, which is linked in the description if you need to refresh your memory how to write simplest form. We can test the numerator and denominator of our difference to see if they both can be divided by the same number. We list their factors to find their greatest common factor, then use it to divide. The factors for 6 are 1, 2, 3, and 6. The factors for 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. For 6 twelfths, their greatest common factor is a 6. We divide the numerator and denominator by that same number 6, and it's equal to 1 half. For 2 twelfths, we write the factors for 2 and the factors for 12. The factor that they have in common that is the greatest is a 2. We divide the numerator and denominator by that 2, and it's equal to 1 sixth. And there should be no remainder when we do this division. If we don't use their greatest common factor, we will be forced to do more division. For 6 twelfths, we can see they have the factors 1, 2, and 3 in common. They're not the greatest common factor, but they do have them in common. If we divide the numerator and denominator by 2, we're going to get 3 6. And we'll have to divide again. We could divide the numerator and denominator both by a 3. That's equal to 1 half. If we used the greatest common factor, the 6, we only need to divide once. And either way, the fraction will be in simplest form, whether we divide two times or one time, but using the greatest common factor is faster. And we use less math. We can use a fraction strip of one whole to see the difference is less than one whole. If the minuend is less than one whole, that's the four-fifths, and we're subtracting from it, the difference will also be less than one whole. Four-fifths minus one-tenth is equal to the difference seven-tenths. Sometimes we can use different sets of same denominator fraction strips to find the difference. All of the answers will be correct but they'll all simplify to one-half. We have two-thirds minus one-six, and we have our difference here. We could see four-eighths fits perfectly, but when we divide the numerator and denominator by their greatest common factor, four, it's equal to one-half. Three-six fits perfectly. When we divide the numerator and denominator by the greatest common factor, it's equal to one-half. And for two-fourths, it fits perfectly. Dividing the numerator and denominator by their greatest common factor, 2, it's equal to 1 half. So 2 thirds minus 1 sixth 
is equal to one half. Here we have three eighths minus one fourth. We can see a one eighth piece lines up perfectly for the difference between the two lengths. Three eighths minus one fourth is equal to one eighth. And we can see that two eighths is equal to one fourth. Beware of fraction strips that seem as though they line up to each other, but don't. We can use a ruler or straight edge to be sure. Here we have 5 eighths, but 6 tenths, we still have a little gap here, so they are not equal to each other. Here we have 7 twelfths, and we can see the little gap, so they're not, it's not equal to 5 eighths either. Their edges must line up perfectly. This is the tricky one. We have 3 fifths. It's not equal to 7 twelfths. We need to take a closer look. When we line them up, there's a very tiny little gap here. So 3 fifths is not equal to 7 twelfths. So be very careful and make sure they line up perfectly. The model shows how much pizza was left over from lunch. Bob ate one-third of the whole pizza for dinner. Write a fraction that represents the amount of pizza that is remaining after dinner. So we think there's one piece missing. There were one, two, three, four, five, six, and in all, there's five, six left. Two slices, if we split this into three equal parts, Two slices as two six would be one third of the pizza. So we have five six of the pizza left. We want to take away one third, which is two six. It leaves half the pizza. If we take away two slices as one third, it leaves half the pizza. So one half represents the amount of remaining pizza. Now in video 6.5 coming up soon, we'll show how to add or subtract using common denominators. This is called a fraction wall, and a fraction wall and a straight edge can help us write fractions in simplest form. We choose the fraction bar with the lowest denominator that lines up. Here we have 8 twelfths right here on this line, and we can see that 6 ninths is the same it lines up. See that? This one and this one. We can also see that 4 sixths lines up and 2 thirds lines up. These fractions are equal to each other. They're equivalent fractions. To write 8 twelfths in simplest form, we choose the lowest denominator, the 3. It's 2 thirds. I have copies of this fraction wall on my Joanne School Facebook page that you can take a screenshot of or you can copy and paste it and print it for yourself. And remember, there's links in the description for PayPal and Patreon.com if you want to help support my three dogs and support me and my efforts to help you. Just make sure you're writing your differences in simplest form and that the link to that fourth grade math video is in the description. Our next lesson, 6.3 for 5th grade math, we're going to estimate fraction sum and differences using benchmarks. Stay safe. I'll see you next time, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.